This conference will now be recorded. All right, folks, so good morning. So we are going over our, today is a Thursday, the 11th, and we're going over the assignments that are due and, and the, the actual uh, quiz that's due this week. It'll be due by Sunday, five to midnight. Um, this lab will be due one week from today. And so you'll see here, as far as you'll label eye and ear images that are posted in documents and resources, I'm gonna show you those. You're gonna do a paper, right? Two page paper on special senses. You're gonna pick one of these topics to do, okay? So you're gonna choose one of these topics and then you'll complete a uh, APA uh, seven, right? That's the format that we're using for doing a two page paper. It's the same format that we're, we have been using and used uh, for the paper that you're doing this week for neurological. Uh, disorder. So here we have these uh, special senses. You can pick one of them. Like I said, one topic. So myopia, hyperopia, this is all one topic, right? Same with hearing aids, cochlear implants, one topic, okay? Um, chart and write the pathway. And this this won't take but a, a, just a couple of a few minutes. And the label, the eye and the ear, only a few minutes. And I'm going to go over it with you right now. Uh, it's going to be recorded on this video. So you can actually watch the video and, and learn from the, you know, how to label these images and I, you know, simple enough. As far as the pathway of light in the eye and the pathway of sound, I'm going to also discuss that, that with you and it'll be on the video here. So you'll have that also that, you know, we've done it. You just have to write it down and uh, uh, give it to me in a Word document form. So you can, um, the eye and the ear images, there are three total, two eye, one ear, and then, so that can be, you'll submit that to me as well as the two page paper, which should be about three pages because you're gonna also have, you know, you need to be able to uh, cite your sources. So it'll be three pages total. So that's three plus these three, that's six. And then one word document for these two right here as far as the uh, pathway of light and sound, okay? So that's located in right here as far as eye in the ear lab. You'll click on that, so I'll click on that. And you'll see here, it just gives you just what I just showed you. Okay, just read through that. If you have any questions and you're gonna just continually upload the files so that you have uploaded all of the uh, files for this lab here, okay? And then let's go to coursework again. Like I said, I'm going to, I'm gonna change the, the due date. So it's open right now, the nervous system quiz, and it'll open to be to open till Sunday, not Saturday. So I'll change that. Uh, once we're done with class today. And then I wanted to show you in documents and resources. So in documents and resources in unit two, you'll see here that there's, um, let's see, the brain images. I've clicked on that and I'm gonna show you that. The eye image, I didn't, I'm not gonna show you that one. I'll, I mean, I'll just show you that now, but I'm not going to go over that. I'm gonna go over uh, one that's already labeled so that you'll be able to see it. But here you'll follow, you'll uh, fill this in for me. Eye image two is this image right here. And I'm gonna go over this image. I'm gonna go over an image that's already labeled for you. And then this is the third one. You don't have to fill this in. So there was the two images for the eye. And then lastly, Here's the ear. Um, I don't have one that's not filled in, so you're okay with that as far as it's just the eye that you'll have to complete for me, okay? Those two images for the eye. I thought I had one for the ear there that was unlabeled. I'm not gonna worry about it, but this is what I'm gonna go over with you uh, today there as far as discussing the structures. And here, this lab quiz two. So those there are a couple people that already printed this out. Please reprint it because I revised it a bit Okay, and I'm going to show that to you and go over as far as uh, that with you today. So I'm going to also, in addition to going over the eye and the ear um, anatomical structures, I'm going to go over the structures for the brain. All right, so these are two areas for lab practical number two that you're going to have to review and know for lab quiz number two. Okay. All right, so let's minimize this here. And I want to just open you up just for a moment here and just ask you, uh, does anybody have any questions before I move on? So you don't have to. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to post repost another uh, ear image that you have to label. Don't worry about that. Then it's just going to be the two images of the eye, as well as that paper, and then the pathway of 
sound and light, light for the eye, sound for the ear. And I'll discuss that with you after I go over the anatomical structures. Any questions before I move on? Okay, all right, very good. Let me hide everyone and I'll continue sharing my screen with you all. Okay, so let's do this. Let's first go over to, let's do the brain images. So the brain images, So primarily, I'm going to be going over looking at these three images right here. Okay, we'll start with this image. This image shows you uh, the lobes of the brain. Question? Uh, Roxanne, do you have a question? No, I'm sorry. Did I did I unmute myself? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Do you need me to mute you? Are you good? Okay. All right. Okay, going back to sharing my screen with you all. And let's see here. Okay, so yeah, so we're looking at uh, images of the brain as far as this is a uh, the left cerebral hemisphere. And so what we're looking at are the lobes of the brain. And they correspond with uh, the different um, parts of the skull. So you're looking at the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. Excuse me one moment. Sorry about that. So you'll see here as far as the frontal lobe, in particular this region right here, this is important for our ability uh, to be able to consciously control what's going on with our musculature. And this is called the, the motor cortex. This is the sensory cortex right here, part of that parietal lobe, and that receives sensory input. So any of this information that we receive as far as from the sensory receptors of our body, like for pressure, touch, um, whatever that may be that's coming up, as well as special senses, they go to this portion of the parietal lobe. And then in particular, you'll see right in this region right here, it's for your sense of vision, so your sense of sight, um, that's processed here. Your sense of hearing, processed here. Your sense of taste, processed here in the frontal lobe as well as in the temporal lobe. Um, and as well as your ability to speak, processed right here as far as the ability to actually make the words that come out. And then to understand the words about right in this region right here. So those are the lobes of your brain. And now understand too that we're also missing uh, another lobe that is deep within here, okay? And we'll, I'm not asking you to, to give me that. Um, so just know that frontal, uh, parietal, occipital, temporal, uh, the insular lobe, if you were to peel back the temporal lobe a bit, right deep within would be the insular lobe. And actually what's interesting about that insular lobe, again, you don't have to know this for the, for the practical, but for the quiz, but know that that's, there seems to be some association with uh, um, disorders where we have addiction. People, and in particular, they've noticed it with uh, folks that are addicted to smoking cigarettes. And that when there's damage to that area, a patient who has been smoking for years uh, no longer has that desire to smoke. It's kind of a wild thing. So they've, they've noticed this as a result of uh, whether there was brain damage there, as a result of a stroke or as a result of a tumor or an operation to remove a tumor in that region, then damage the surrounding tissue and they no longer had this desire to want to smoke. So quite interesting. So they're doing studies regarding the insular lobe and, uh, and addiction. I'm going to show you here also that we have the midbrain, the pons, the medulla oblongata, and then the extension of that would be the spinal cord. Okay. And so this brainstem, very important for your ability to breathe, your ability to have your heart rate, blood pressure and such. So the basic functions of life, controlled respiratory rate, controlled by this region right here. And also it acts as a conduit for information coming to the brain and information going away from the brain. Okay, so very important that area, the brainstem. Now this, uh, this right here, you're seeing what's called a, uh, a sagittal section or a lateral view. And what we've done is we've done a, um, a mid-sagittal cut, right? So that's one half of the brain and the neurological structures, 
Okay. So again, we'll start off with that midbrain, the pons, the medulla oblongata, and the extension would be the spinal cord. So there's information coming up to the brain through here and information going away from the brain through here and to the spinal cord. This region right here is called the cerebral hemisphere. So when we looked at this structure right here, this is the left cerebral hemisphere. Okay. Now know that. So there's two cerebral hemispheres, right? These are bilateral. And let's see, I thought that I had for you all. Hmm. Okay, give me one moment. I'm gonna just pull up for you. The, maybe I'll see it here. Give me one second here, let's see. Let's see what this is. No. All right, let me, let me pull up. Uh, I wanna show you another structure that's on your chart as far as what you'll need to know for the lab quiz too. And this is called the longitudinal fissure. So very simply folks, the two cerebral hemispheres, right? Here's the fissure, it's the gap between the two lobes, between the two um, hemispheres, sorry, not lobes, hemispheres, comprised of lobes, all right? So take a look at this here, this is another image here. You can see the left hemisphere, the right hemisphere, and that green line, that would be the longitudinal fissure, okay? Just, uh, let's see here, maybe look at something else a little different. Yeah, so here we go. So this image just shows you frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and here you're seeing that longitudinal fissure. Here's the nose, here's the ears. It gives you a little bit more of a perspective as far as seeing it this way. Um, let, let's save that because then I will, uh, I'll make sure that I, I'll post that for you all. Oh, it's just all oh, it's a, as a web page image. I don't know if I don't know if that'll save, but that's a good one. We'll see what we can do with that. All right, let's minimize this. Let's come back to the brain. And so I'm going to go up here and see that. So I said to you that the um, cerebral hemispheres, there's right and left. Well, then this structure right here, it's called the corpus callosum. This is the structure that actually allows for communication between the right and left cerebral hemispheres. And this structure. Um, allows for then a crossing over of fibers in, in so much that the right cerebral hemisphere controls the left side of my body and the left cerebral hemisphere controls the right side of my body. And those fibers are crossing over at this corpus callosum, okay? Now let's see what else as far as that we have here. I'm just looking at the list here. I, I know all the structures, but I wanna make sure I'm just only pointing out the structures you need to know for your, um, practical exam for your quiz. So I'm going to come down here for a moment because I want to show you that these folds, kind of their weird folds of tissue of the brain, those are called, so one is called a gyrus, okay, or gyri plural. And these indentations, these indent, so not this one, but these indentations, they're called a sulcus, okay? So the gyrus is a fold, the sulcus is an indentation. An indentation is not as deep as the fissure that I just showed you before, that longitudinal fissure. All right, now I'm gonna come back up here to this image. And so this region right here, folks, where the thalamus is located, so this is a space. This space, see it's kind of gold in color, it's called the third ventricle. It's an area where there's a cerebral spinal fluid is produced and it's present in that space. You see in front of the cerebellum, the cerebellum with its arbor vitae, this white matter, and the darker colored tissue is the gray matter, okay? So the white kind of looks like a tree. That's the arbor vitae of the cerebellum. That's white matter. And then gray matter would be this darker area of the cerebellum of this portion of the brain. Anterior to it is this structure here called the fourth ventricle. So we have this third ventricle, and this fourth ventricle, this is a space. And we have these canals that allow for movement of the cerebral spinal fluid outside of the brain and inside of the brain, okay? And it's produced inside of the brain. In this space, in this third ventricle, we have the thalamus and we have the hypothalamus, okay? These are very important structures for your ability to do what you do, um, really to, to help 
uh, the endocrine system, the system that produces hormones that control the body, that hypothalamus is the controller of that, really, of what, really what takes place and goes on with this gland right here, which is called the master gland, which is the pituitary gland. That's this one right here. So it's really connected to this hypothalamus. This thalamus is where everything except for your sense of smell, so all the special senses except for your sense of smell, pass through this thalamus. And any type of sensory input from the rest of our body passes through this thalamus. And then it will send it to the direct part of the brain that it needs to go to. So say for your sense of vision, it will go to then the occipital lobe. For your sense of, uh, uh, let's see, of uh, hearing, it would go to the temporal lobe, okay? But it's sent from this thalamus. So information will go here and then spread out to different areas of the body, of the brain that it needs to go to. Okay, and let's see here. All right, very good. So I've, I've covered all the structures that you need to know, uh, again, as far as for the uh, lab quiz. Okay, so I've gone over uh, a gyrus and a sulcus. I've talked about the longitudinal fissure. So let's look at that list. Yeah, I, I, you, I want you to look at the structures while I'm saying the names. Um, the cerebral hemispheres, we've looked at those. The corpus callosum, right, right here. We've looked at the different lobes, the frontal, the parietal, the temporal, and the occipital lobes. Uh, we've looked at the third and the fourth ventricle. We've looked at the cerebellum with its white matter, which is the arbor vitae, that tree of life, and the gray matter, which is the darker material surrounding that white matter, those white lines. So the gray matter is the gray tissue here. The white matter is these are these white lines here of that tree of life, that arbor vitae. And the uh, pituitary gland right here, the hypothalamus and the thalamus, we talked about those. And then the structures of the midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata, and the spinal cord. So those are all the structures that you'll have to identify for the lab quiz number two. And again, you'll have a word bank as you did for the uh, other uh, quiz, for the first quiz. All right. Now let's go to, let's see what we can look at as far as structures of the eye. So I'll start off with this one, and then I'm going to go to uh, a couple of other images of the eye. Yeah, here we go, those two also. Um, I'm gonna start off with this one because I like uh, to show you, let me make it a little bit bigger, there we go. These are the muscles that are, are that are skeletal muscle, meaning that we can actually control these muscles. And you say, so how can you control your eye muscles? Well, if you just sit still, right? Don't move your head, yet you can move your eyes in all different directions as a result of these skeletal muscles. So when you think of skeletal muscle, you think of, oh, these kind of muscles. Well, they are, they're not skeletal muscles, they're extraocular muscles, but they're analogous to the skeletal muscle in that you have conscious control. That's what I wanted to get at. You have uh, voluntary conscious control. So skeletal muscle moves the skeleton, these extraocular muscles move the eye, okay? So misspoke there for a moment, but they both are, what I, the, the gist of it was that I wanted to get at was that they are voluntarily controlled you control them, right? And so you'll see here as far as we have, so this would be a left eye, so the left eye. And so we would have the medial rectus, the lateral rectus, superior and inferior rectus. These are the musculature of the eye, okay? And these will allow for the superior oblique and the inferior oblique will allow for very complex movements of the eye. It's quite remarkable and quite amazing. You'll see here on the uh, side view, okay? So this would be a right eye, and what you're not seeing, it's been cut, is this lateral rectus, this muscle that would come across. We have this inferior and the superior rectus. And once these muscles contract, just imagine the complex movements that can take place with your eye. Let's back in here. So here we have a lateral view, a side view of the eye. So it's a cross section, okay? So we've, we were actually looking at structures of the eye and I'm going to review with you all the structures that you'll need to know for the practical, for the lab quiz. We call it a practical exam in anatomy because really they're going through the room in, in, in one of our rooms 
we have set up all the, the, the models and such, and the students will have to go from station to station and identify the structures. Here, we're do, we, would, we would do that for this class also, but we would give you a word bank. With the A and P class, there's no word bank, and so we just call it now a lab quiz for you all since it's virtual online. So you'll have here this clear structure, right? The clear structure, when you look at your eye and you see there's a clear structure that's covering the pupil and the iris, the colored portion of your eye, the uh, pigmented portion of your eye, um, this clear structure is called the cornea. And the white portion of your eye is called the sclera. Okay, so the white of your eye, the sclera. The cornea, the clear portion of your eye. The iris, again, is this pigmented portion. So if you have blue eyes, brown eyes, green eyes, that would be this pigmented muscle has a color and it creates a hole right here. And this hole will allow for light to pass through. Now I'll, I'll discuss after I'm done with the structures that you need to know, I'll discuss how light passes through and such again, review that with you all. The lens is right here. And this lens will change shape in order to focus or bend the light we call it refraction, to the retina. This is the inner lining of the eye, the retina, okay? The choroid is this middle layer, and it has many blood vessels. See all those little uh, blue and red dots? Those are cut blood vessels in that choroid layer. And then the uh, cranial nerve number two is the optic nerve, and that's this structure right here, which will send the information from the eye to uh, the thalamus and then eventually to the to the occipital lobe okay so as we look here i want you to remember that there is an aqueous humor there's there's a fluid here and in this chamber here we have vitreous humor aka vitreous uh, body we call it and it's more of gelatinous type structure okay like a jelly like a thin jelly okay but it's still that's that gives the shape for the eye this jelly all right now when light is passing into the eye and will eventually hit the retina what will happen well light will pass through the cornea through the aqueous humor through the hole here this retina hit the and really what's going to happen is that um, as it hits the lens it's going to be bent to the uh, retina to the inner portion of the eye it's gonna pass through this vitreous humor and then hit, be refracted, be bent, be focused to the retina. So we have the cornea, the aqueous humor, the lens, and the vitreous body all bend the light as the light is hitting this specific area back here of the retina, okay? And then from the retina, these photoreceptors, it will go to cranial nerve number two. But as far as structures, we're passing through cornea, aqueous humor, passing through the, the uh, pupil, the lens, the vitreous body, to the retina, okay? So those are the structures that light is actually passing through. Now, as far as other structures of the eye, we have what's called the lacrimal apparatus. And this structures right here are for your tear production because your eye needs to be continually bathed in a, in a fluid and this fluid is um, tears. And so it's not always that, you know, like when you, when you actually have an episode of crying as a result of something that's very funny or, or very upsetting, um, you know, it's just, just a, a film of this uh, tears and also a very light mucus that's present there that will keep the eye uh, safe and healthy. And so we have here this lacrimal gland, which is producing the uh, tears. So producing the structure right here, this lacrimal gland is producing the tears. We have these ducts, these tubes, that will allow for the tears to bathe the eye and keep it always moist. And then we have these little canaliculi, these little tiny canals that will bring the tears, drain the tears to this lacrimal sac and this duct, this nasolacrimal duct and it'll drain into your uh, nasal uh, cavity here. And so interesting, right? When, you, when you're crying, right? You seem to have to blow your nose. This is the reason why, because this is where all that excess tears <coughs> will drain into the uh, nasal cavity. All right, so that's the structures of uh, tear production. 
Then let's lastly go to, here we go, the structures for hearing, and then I'll talk about the passage of uh, sound into the hearing apparatus. So we have here the outer ear, the middle ear, and then the inner ear. So we have here, sorry, my phone's going off there. Uh, the outer ear is funneling the sound waves into this external acoustic meatus or auditory canal, external auditory canal, and then it will hit the uh, tympanic membrane. We have here the malleus, incus, and stapes, these ossicles of the middle ear. We have this eustachian tube that will help to equalize the pressure in the middle ear. And then we have the inner ear contents, the cochlea for your sense of sound, of sense of hearing, and your uh, semicircular canals and the vestibule for your sense of balance and equilibrium working in conjunction with uh, the cerebellum. Okay, so that would be Here we go. That would be, here we go. That would be this structure right here, the cerebellum. I showed it to you cut, right? But this is the cerebellum that works with the inner ear for your sense of balance and equilibrium, okay? So, and then we also have lastly, uh, the vestibular cochlear nerve. We can also call it the auditory nerve, cranial nerve number eight. It has two branches going to both sections of the inner ear. Right? So when sound waves enter in, they're funneled into this canal, right? This external acoustic canal, meatus or external acoustic uh, auditory canal. It's two words, two terms. Actually, there's even more terms than that, but know it by one of those two terms, and it's going to be on the uh, word bank. Passes and hits the tympanic membrane. Once the sound waves hit that, they're going to be transferred into an energy of these bones moving and pushing on this plate here, this so this is the uh, malleus incus, the stapes, pushes on that oval window. That oval window then will push on the apparatus here in the inner ear that will put pressure upon uh, liquid. It'll move liquid in such a way that it will be able to stimulate the sensory receptors in here for your sense of hearing, and it'll be uh, transferred to really your thalamus and then your temporal lobe, which will have you and give you an understanding regarding uh, what it is that you're hearing and such. So quite remarkable. All right, folks. So those are the structures that I wanted to go over today with you. Here you'll see this is the image. And like I said, I reposted this because it had a couple of images, a couple of terms that I removed, as well as an added the eustachian tube. So these are the structures that I went over today as far as the brain, the ear, the ear, and the eye. Okay. And so I will, this video is recorded, so you'll have ap, ap, actually opportunity later on today to be able to access it uh, in order to help you with any of the work that needs to be done. And like I said to you uh, before there, as far as the, there, I didn't, I'm not going to post an image for the ear for you to label, but you'll need to do it for the lab quiz. So just, uh, you know, make sure that you're doing the two eye images and uh, we'll go from there. So let's go back to coursework for you all. And so when you see here as far as here we go. The eye and the ear lab. So don't worry about doing the ear image. That's not I just have the eye image. There's two of them that you'll have to identify doing the paper and then doing the pathway of light and the pathway of sound, you need to do those, okay? All right, so I'm gonna stop recording.